This week on The Wire, property taxes hit record levels, world's wealthy head for Australia, and Aussies rank seventh in property focus. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest. I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the managing director of Infinite Wealth. Welcome to The Wire. This is where we cover all the top stories happening from the week in real estate. And of course, we love to get your interaction with these posts. So please comment, like, love, angry, send us your questions. We have our Just Ask Tim video series that we do every single week. So if you want me to answer your questions live, send them through on one of our social media channels and you can contact us at Infinite Wealth AU, all, uh, uh, all small letters. No spaces or at Tim Guest AU, no spaces or lower caps. But let's get into the top stories happening from the week in real estate. So, property taxes hit record levels. So, property taxes by, paid by Australians have hit record levels. And the official, official figures show that Australians pay more taxes on their real estate than their employers do for payroll or labour force. Property taxes have a major impact on housing affordability as they are a big component of the cost of creating new dwellings. In fact, it's been estimated that 40% of the cost of a new dwelling are property taxes and levies. Now, ABS data has found that tax revenue collected by all levels of government for property grew by over $8.5 billion just in the last five years. That's incredible, right? Taxes on employees' payroll have grown by $3.9 billion in the same period. Now, in financial year 2018, revenue from property taxes totaled $30 billion, which is a $1.6 billion increase uh, on the previous year. And the biggest beneficiary is local government, which had an $18 billion slice of the revenue generated last year, while state, the state government portions was 12, uh, just over $12 billion. According to the ABS, the sole source of taxation revenue for local governments is taxes on property, while state governments has taxes on property, employers' payroll, and the provision of goods and services. Now, also what's happening is the world's wealthy are heading for Australia. So the world's wealthy are increasingly on the move and many are choosing Australia as their new home. Now, considering that we've got one of the fastest growing populations in the Western developed world, it's not surprising that a lot of people are looking to get into a stable growing economy like Australia. Uh, about 108,000 millionaires migrated across borders last year, which was a 14% increase on the prior year and more than double the level in 2013. That's according to Johannesburg-based New World Wealth. Now, Australia, the US and Canada are the top destinations, while China and Russia are the biggest losers. The UK saw around 3,000 millionaires depart last year with Brexit and taxation cited as possible reasons. Wealth migration figures point to present conditions such as crime, lack of business, um, uh, where was I? Crime, lack of business opportunities or religious tensions. And that's uh, coming from Andrew Amoyles, head of research at New World Wealth. Australia tops most wish list for immigrants because of its perceived safety, no inheritance tax and strong business ties to China, Japan and South Korea. It also stands out for its sustained growth uh, having escaped the GFC unscathed and avoided recession for more than 27 years. The US was the second most popular de destination in 2018, with New York City, Los Angeles, Miami, and the San Francisco Bay Area the preferred options. Moving on to our third story for the week. So Aussies ranked number seven on property focus. So Australians are spending several hours conducting property search each week, far exceeding the amount of time they spend at the gym or talking to their parents. So this is an online survey from HSBC reveals Australians are dedicating an average of two and a half hours a week to property research. According to HSBC's research, which surveyed almost 12,000 adults, Australia is the seventh most property obsessed nation in the world. Adults around the globe were found to spend an average of three and a half hours a week researching property, signaling that a culture of property obsession may be sweeping the globe. Australians reportedly spent twice as much time researching property than exercising at the gym, uh, with they only uh, averaged 1.08 hours a week. Oscar, please be quiet. Thank you. He's my little assistant for today's, uh, today's video. Uh, or they spent uh, 0.88 hours on average speaking to their parents. So HSBC says the research demonstrates that cooling markets in Melbourne and Sydney have done little to dent property fixation uh, among Australians. The UAE and USA were reportedly the world's most property obsessed nations, which were clocking an average of 6.6 .6 hours and 4.95 hours respectively on research each week. So guys, that takes care of the top stories happening from the week in real estate this week. Uh, like I said here before, we love to see your interaction with the post, so please like, love, angry, comment, question, send us through something so that we can answer live. And of course, the last thing that I'll really ask you guys to do is please share this valuable information with your friends and family. You know, click share on your social media channels so that they can get the benefit 
of it all as well. So actually got a quick question coming through from uh, Staples 77. Uh, who is better in for investment, future, liberal or labor? Look, without a doubt, the answer is liberal. Um, look, uh, you know, some of the economic policies being proposed by labor are incredibly dangerous. Um, I mean, their, their po policy when it comes to franking credits is disgracefully unfair. Um, it really only impacts people that, um, uh, in terms of getting a uh, their tax refund, I mean, other people will be able to claim their credit, but those people that don't actually have anything to offset it against will not be able to get their tax back. If you're paying more tax than you should be, then you should be able to get that tax back, regardless of um, whether you've got uh, income to offset that against or not. Obviously, negative gearing. Uh, I mean, we're gonna what we're actually gonna see is we're gonna see a huge spike in rents when it comes uh, to the implementation of negative gearing. Um, and then the other thing that I have huge concerns about is also Labor's climate policy. I mean, it's it's shocking that they will not relieve any policies, uh, sorry, any costings around um, their policies. And actually just uh, today, some independent costings came out, which will claim it could cost somewhere between around 300 to $550 billion to implement uh, Labor's policy. So the policies that they're planning on implementing are economically um, unsound and potentially could be economically disastrous for our nation. So look, if someone who's keen on building their wealth and investing, um, I highly recommend you encourage your friends and family as well as yourselves to vote Liberal this coming election. Um, so yeah, that gives you my take on uh, when it comes to investment, but great question. I hope that answers it for you, uh, Jason and uh, Staples there as well. Uh, guys, look, that's it for me. Like I said, please share this information with your friends and family and I'll be coming at you probably on Tuesday next week with uh, our Just Ask Tim video series. Uh, so hit us up with your questions and I'll look forward to speaking to you guys soon. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.